I'm about to show you something you ain't never seen before in your life. So when it comes to fire alarm systems and we putting in smoke detectors or input devices, these devices do not know what to do. So we have to program them as fire alarm technicians. We have to set functions, I would say, functions so the input could activate the output. So I wrote down a rule. This is specifically for the Edwards system, the ESC2 or the ESC3 fire alarm system. So let me give you an example of how we will write a rule or smoke detector to activate the outputs. Check this out. The label, which is very important to let us know that the smoke detector is going to be, this is what the rule is for the smoke detector. So we need the label with the brackets. We need the qualifier, which is the alarm. And then we need the smoke label. So now let me see if I could break this down. When it comes to you label in your devices, there are labels and then there are messages. A label is what we would use to manipulate the rules of the functions inside of the fire alarm system. The message will be the description of where the device is actually located. For instance, if you have a smoke detector in the conference room on the first floor, the message will be first floor smoke detector conference room. But we will put a label as smoke detector or smoke one. Because if we have 10 smoke detectors, we will label them from smoke one to smoke 10, but each one will have a different message because they are in different locations. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so qualify, which is the alarm. When the smoke goes into alarm, we want these output actions to activate, right? So we need the apostrophe, we need the colon, apostrophe, and when you activate multiple outputs, you gotta separate them with commas. Also, the output circuit also have labels as well, labels and also messages. So we have to identify whatever the label is, and I'll explain what all this mean in a second. When you finish activating all of your outputs, you end it with a semicolon. You will get a syntax error if you don't have these qualifiers in place when you're writing your rules. So if it doesn't compile, meaning if it doesn't take the characters and turn them into numbers so that way the computer can understand what to do, when it compiles it, you'll get an error. So if you don't have these qualifiers in place. So let me show you what this means. So inside of these apostrophes, I have smoke underscore asterisk star. So instead of me writing it like this, smoke underscore one, smoke underscore two, because like I said, I have 10 smoke detectors all the way down to 10. So instead of me writing it like this, we'll put the qualifier. So that means anything that has the word smoke will be recognized. Anything that has the underscore will be recognized. Anything on in this column will be recognized. So it has to say smoke and it has to be an underscore for this equation to be true. And anything on this side, this is like a wild card. So if you have different numbers, letters, or different characters in this column, this wild card will just understand what to do with this column here. So now this input equation now goes true when there's any smoke detector senses smoke. So if there's smoke in the chamber or fire in the building, the smoke detector will now go into alarm. So now when it goes into alarm, this is what happens on the output side. We have our colon. So on our output side, we wanna turn on the horn circuit because we will have horns and strobes. Usually these circuits are separate or nowadays we can run it on two wire and then it'll sync the strobes across the two wires. But ideally, you would have two separate circuits, especially if it's a class C building, you have two separate circuits with A and B circuit, maybe C or D if you have multiple circuits on one particular floor. So we're gonna activate the horns. We're gonna turn then, because it works, it works in this direction, right? So we're gonna activate the horns, then we're gonna activate the strobes, then we're gonna activate elevator recall, then we're gonna shut the fans down, and then we're gonna open doors. So what this is gonna do is, Turn on all of the horn circuits. Turn on all of the strobe circuits. Elevator recall would be either send the elevator to the first floor, if the smoke is on another floor other than the first floor, or if the elevator is on the first floor, it's gonna go to an alternate floor if the smoke detector goes off in the elevator lobby on the first floor. Fan shut down, it shuts all of the fans down inside of the building to stop the circulation of smoke. In door release, it opens all the doors so you can get out of the building free egress or into the stairwell where you can go down through the stairwell to get out the building. So this is how we would write a rule for all of the input devices. So if we have pull stations, pull stations have different functions. It doesn't recall the elevator and it don't shut the fans off, but it'll turn on the horns, it'll turn on the strobes, and it will open up the doors. So the other input devices work the same, same as 
water flow or pulse stations, but they also activate and turn on different functions. So for a pulse station, pulse stations will turn on the horn stroke, pulse stations will turn on the strobe circuit, pulse stations will turn on the horn circuit, pulse stations do not recall the elevator though, so it won't do this, and it don't shut the fans down, and it won't do this, because it's a manual activation. Only automatic activations will shut down fans, but it will open up the door so that way you can get out of the building. A water flow will perform all these functions, plus more maybe, and a water flow will perform the same functions, the horn strobes, the elevators, the fans, and door release, and other functions that you may have on your fire alarm system. This is how you will write rules in the background of a fire alarm system, especially when you're working on the Edward system, the ESC2 or the ESC3. So if you have any questions on fire alarm, if you have any troubles out there troubleshooting, you don't understand something, let me know in the comments, send me a DM. I'll try to create the video to help you understand how to become a better troubleshooting, especially when it comes to fire alarm. Game is really easy as you get to know it. And if you just start understanding and breaking things down into small little pieces, it'd be easier for you to troubleshoot. I learned a lot when I stopped being nervous. Once I started, you know, paying attention to what I was doing, I got better at what I was doing. So I am the fire alarm expert. Peace.